thank you, Dr. Shamani. Long-term debt is a cliche in interventional cardiology, and I'm sure uh, over a period of time, long-term dual pathway inhibition will also become a cliche as uh, uh, vascular dose of roxaban and aspirin are being talked more and more. The core therapy of acute coronary syndrome is dual antiplatelet therapy besides the other drugs. And that is because the three seminal studies showed that giving these drugs for a year definitely reduces the three-point mace. Uh, clopidogrel cure study uh, and triton, prasugrel and plato, ticagrelor. So DAPT duration for one year is a class one indication in the all the guidelines. And this is because it is evidence-based, is context specific, and it is resource sensitive. However, while we have dichotomized DAPT to one year in uh, class one guidelines, the risk of stent thrombosis and recurrent event is continuous. It is not, not dichotomous. So obviously there would be individuals where you may have to give therapy for a much longer time, whose benefit to risk ratio is such that long DAPT would be useful. There would be others where short DAPT might do enough, and there may be no benefit of prolonged DAPT. There is also an issue of platform, the scaffold platform, which is making the depth shorter and shorter, and we have large number of trials which have tried to prove this point shown at the bottom. Many trials like short depth and smart choice have suggested shorter uh, DAPT as a viable option with current generation stents. And here is the example of stop depth two and smart choice, both showing not only non-inferiority of, of one month and three month depth, but also superiority of very short depth studies. Even in patients who have STEMI, the data has been collected and the data meta-analysis from these two trials, smart date and depth stemming, shows that six month depth versus more than 12 month depth when compared, the net adverse clinical events are no different. Three point mace are no different. However, what is different is that bar three to five bleeding is less for shorter depth. On the other hand, myocardial infarctions are somewhat more in individuals who are given a short depth the recent studies presented in ACC called Tycho, which is a Korean study in acute coronary syndrome and has six events as a primary events have, uh, events have shown that there is a 34% reduction in primary endpoints in case DAPT is shortened to three months and later on ticagrelor is given as monotherapy. The Design of this study is very similar to Twilight study, which is a study of all comers, while Tycho is a study of patients with acute coronary syndrome. Recently, in TCT, in fact, last uh, month, Tycho STEMI was presented. And when you look at the shorter depth versus 12 months depth, one would realize that the net adverse clinical events were actually showing a trend towards reduced uh, events with shorter depth, although it did not reach statistical significance because number of patients were just 1,000. The twilight is a much bigger study and the twilight study, of course, again, is not confined to acute coronary syndrome. It, it involves the uh, stable coronary artery disease, STEMI, non-STEMI, and, and some asymptomatic individuals also but it gives us the message that three months of depth followed by monotherapy with the Cagrelor does result in markedly reduced bleeding events, but probably similar three-point mace events, suggesting that it is possible that even in complex angioplasty, you may be able to shorten depth. In TCT, Last month, two trials were presented by uh, 
uh, Roxana Mehran and her group, Zions 90 and Zions 28. 20, Zions 28 was where the debt was given only for 28 days in Zions 90 where the debt therapy was given for 90 days and historical com controls were used. The comparing the historical control from Zions we study in both the trials showed that both one month and three month debt therapy was effective and non-inferior but safety was period, clearly indicating that for this platform, this scaffold platform, a shorter depth may be a good idea. Meta-analysis of short versus standard duration of depth in a large number of patients, when, when you compare less than 12 months, anything from 12, six and three, six and 12 months versus 12 months and more, has been has shown that mortality is similar, myocardial infarction similar, stent thrombosis statistically slightly more in shorter duration, and major bleeds is slightly more in those who are given depth for more than 12 months. But we need to keep in mind that acute coronary syndrome is a complex phenotype with recurrent ischemic events and long-term depth may partly solve the issue. In which patient it will solve the issue? The prospect study by Greg Stone showed that half of the events which occur following ACS treatment occur because of culprit lesion related events and half are non-culprit. Culprit lesion events probably we can handle by improved scaffold platforms, but non-culprit lesions we might require DAPT. And so the selection of adequate intensity and duration of depth is a challenging clinical decision. So the guidelines have so far gone up to class 2A for depth more than 12 months after acute coronary syndrome, though in those patients with high ischemic risk and low bleeding risk. And that has been based on three large trials, depth, Pegasus, and Optimize. But we need to keep in mind that both ischemic and bleeding risk are coupled. It's difficult to uncouple these based upon the scores which have been suggested. So like the plat the like the rail line shown here, bleeding risk and thrombotic risk actually mm -hmm. move in the same direction with antiplatelet therapy. And uncoupling the two risks may be difficult. Conventional wisdom for depth is that the aspirin should be continued indefinitely after acute vascular um, event, although it is being challenged and people are saying you can use the other P2Y12 inhibitor. Depth beyond one year may be considered those who have clinical angiographic, uh, high clinical angiographic risk score. That's a class two indication. Quantitative risk scores like depth and precise depth and caliber may be used, a class two indication. And ischemic versus bleeding risk should be assessed annually. And de escalation of monotherapy is a valid strategy in high bleeding risk individuals. But we need to keep in mind something that is more is not always better as far as anti thrombotic treatment is concerned. We learned that thing from charisma trial. And when we looked at the charisma trial, in patients post myocardial infarction, they did benefit from prolonged dual antiplatelet therapy. But the moment you brought in the issue of bleeding, gusto bleeding, in the primary endpoints, the difference was markedly attenuated. Again, suggesting that dual antiplatelet therapy is a good option in some, but not across the board. Pegasus with a 60 milligram BD arm also had some 15% reduction in three point mace when given post MI after one year, up to four years post MI. However, this 20, this 16% benefit got markedly attenuated when bleeding was also counted as one of the primary endpoints. Again, suggesting that. Uh, the dual antiplatelet therapy may be useful, but if bleeding is taken as a primary endpoint, then the benefit get markedly attenuated. Depth trial by Laura Mori, published six years back, showed a significant 29% reduction in three-point mace when you excluded the bleeding. The moment you brought the bleeding in as primary endpoint, you would now realize that the benefit again got markedly attenuated to something like less than 10%, our number needed to treat went up to 140, which makes it unviable strategy routinely. So in depth study, the stent thrombosis were reduced by prolonged depth therapy of, uh, of two and a half years. 
the triple endpoint decreased, myocarditis was less, but gastro bleeding went up and the death went up. So the, the, the depth study suggested that one could use a depth score and if the score is more than two, prolonged depth therapy may be given because more than two score actually uh, uncouples ischemia from ischemic risk from the bleeding risk. And the depth score shown is shown here. Here are the nine points which decide how to calculate the depth score and the number needed to treat with the depth score more than two for reducing ischemic event is 34, but the bleeding risk is, uh, the, uh, the number need to harm is 274. Clearly, benefit is there in case you are going to use prolonged depth in people who have a depth score more than two. Not but right. depth score does uncouple ischemic and bleeding risk. It has been shown in global leaders trial, but but remember one thing that the depth score is a better predictor of ischemic risk rather than a bleeding risk. Quantitative scores are available. We, we commonly use depth and precise depth score. Caliber with 38 variable is hardly used by us in clinical practice. High ischemic risk, we are, we are quite well aware of the clinical parameters which decide the high ischemic risk. We also have angiographic parameters which are well-defined which tell us what is high ischemic risk. High bleeding risk is also well defined. We have used number of, uh, of um, even has blood uh, uh, risk score also can be used. There are many ways to find out what is a high bleeding risk score. Precise depth score, of course, is something which is much simpler, but it takes in account the TLC count, hemoglobin, and creatinine, and hence probably is a little more useful than depth score. And it correlates well, actually, in, in the validated studies. So finally, in his, if the ischemic risk is low, you can give a shorter depth. If the ischemic risk is high, you can give a prolonged depth therapy going as much as three years. If the bleeding risk is high, you can give a shorter depth therapy. And if the bleeding risk is low, one can go for a longer depth therapy. So depth duration, one size shoe does not fit all in acute coronary syndrome. You would have to differentiate the, the ischemic versus the bleeding risk. And do I use prolonged depth in all ACS patients? Well, I quite often swing between being certain and being wrong. And I would actually choose my patients very, very carefully. In the end, I would like to end by a quote by Navjo Sidhu. You got to choose between tightening your belt or losing your pants. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, so you have beautifully brought out the balance between the use of depth and particularly the use of uh, the depth score. The, we always use dual antiplation right at the moment when the patient comes to us with chest pain. Uh, 